The Cheaty Plus 4, what's it like after a thousand hours of testing and printing functional prints in a variety of different materials? Is it any good? Is it worth it? Well, I've discovered some good, some bad things, and just generally some important things that nobody talks about. So stay tuned and let's get into it. So first and foremost, let's talk about the heated chamber. The heated chamber is this printer's claim to fame and I've got it set to 65 degrees Celsius here. And it does in fact heat up to 65 degrees Celsius because I have a probe thermometer showing 66 at the moment. And the probe is located at approximately the height at which printing will take place. So in my opinion, 65 degrees should be the bare minimum to which printers heat up. Ideally in a perfect world, you would want something like 80 degrees. The printer also has this nice foam insulation on the inside, on the panels. This helps to maintain temperature, unlike the usual bare plastic panels of most printers. In terms of print quality, reliability, and the mechanics of the printer, it works just fine. It prints reliably. There's not much to complain about. Thanks to the fine teeth on the belt, you don't get much of that ghosting and fine artifacts, which is not something you want to be troubleshooting on a printer. It prints fast enough for anything you really need, and I've tried a lot of complex geometry. Haven't had any issues whatsoever. Now, the price of the Cheaty Plus 4 is actually quite decent. You can pick it up for $799 USD and usually around $1,200 AUD, and that would actually come with shipping included as well. This 310 by 310 build plate is just one solid metal piece, both sides. It's textured and the texture is part of the actual metal. So what happens is if you have a print that's really stuck onto the build plate and you try and scrape it off, the worst that you're going to do is just scrape off some of that texture, but the build plate itself won't be damaged. There's no layer, there's no film to peel off. Compare that with your regular smooth PEI build plate. This is from a K1 Max. What you'll get is the actual film layer peeling off slowly. No matter what you do, you'll end up damaging it. That's what happens when you have a layer of plastic or protection covering the build plate. Also, this is a one-sided build plate. The other side's a magnet, whereas this one is a double-sided build plate. And the whole thing is just a solid piece of metal. There's nothing that could really go wrong here. So I think this will be the way forward for build plates in general. One con about this printer is definitely the touch screen. It is plastic. It does feel cheap and kind of slow. The 3D icons take a while to load and it's just generally not very responsive. So I'd definitely like to see some higher quality computers and screens going into the future. Another downside to this printer is that it takes a long time to load, retract filament and start prints. It has to go through a process of heating up the bed, the chamber, the nozzle, and then doing a self-leveling process. This is an issue that plagues most printers these days, not just the Cheaty, but it should be sped up. There's no reason why all of this can't be done simultaneously and way quicker. So there you have it guys, those are my thoughts. Is it a good printer? Is it worth it? Well, at the end of the day, let's be honest, what other printer are you going to get that actually offers the same capability as this, especially at that price? Uh, yes, it's had its issues. We had that hardware component that overheated, but it seems they've rectified that since. I would definitely recommend it if you need to print any form of ABS, ASA or other difficult to print materials. Let me know what you think in the comments.